Wrapped inside of this aluminum foil is a high explosive, and I'm gonna do something very stupid. In this video, what I'll be doing is I'll be turning a seemingly harmless chemical into a high explosive and the chemical that I'll be starting off with called acetyl salicylic acid. And if you know your chemistry, it's really just aspirin. And the explosive that I'll be ending off with is called picric acid or as the nerds call it, 246 trinitrophenol. First what I'll need to do is extract the acetyl salicylic acid from the aspirin, which is as simple as grinding the aspirin up to allow it to have more surface area, and then I dissolve it in a solvent. In this case I'll be using acetone, and I add enough acetone to cover up the aspirin in a half, and then I crank up the heat on my hot plate. This is to allow the dissolution of acetyl salicylic acid to occur, and when it does, it'll occur faster. The next step of the extraction is to filter out the filler from the aspirin. So basically, a pill isn't just the drug itself, but it also contains filler, which makes the pill bigger and extends the time it takes to digest the medicine. Now that the acetyl salicylic acid is all filtered through, I can weigh out 10 grams of it and add that to 40 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. This will add a sulfonic acid group to the molecule, but the issue with this group is that it's in the wrong place. And to correct it, all I have to do is heat the solution up to 100 degrees Celsius, which turns the solution black for some reason? I don't know. But anyway, the next step is nitration, which consists of me adding 21 grams of potassium nitrate and adding it in small amounts to avoid overflowing in the beaker. Also, the hot plate has to be heated to 90 degrees Celsius, because if it's any lower, it would result in side reactions that could potentially ruin the yield completely. Once the potassium nitrate is added, I keep it on the heat for about an hour, and then I get ready for the next step. Now all I need to do is add the solution to some ice cold water, and this turns the solution a chalky yellow color. I had a hole in my glove that I didn't realize until my hand was stained so yellow that it looked like I was jacking off a minion. Seriously though, this stuff will like stain anything. It took like 10 days for the stain to get out of my hand, and I had to cut off my fingernails to get rid of the yellow color on there. Anyway, the next and final step is really simple. It's just a recrystallization, and all I'll need to do is filter out the solution and boil it down until there's only about 250 mils of the solution left. After this, I can leave the solution out to cool, and this is because it's about 10 degrees Celsius out here, so it's good. I will admit that I should have let it cool slowly to encourage larger crystals to form, but I was feeling a little gangster, and I didn't want to listen to what I should have done. Now that the crystals are formed, I want to wash them out with some cold water to get some of that red color out. What I'm left with is wet picric acid. This is the end of the video, I guess, so without further ado, thanks for watching.